Today's video is jam-packed full of RGB consent. Sure, whatever, I consent. Devastating life choices. I guess, let me go get my credit card. And gaming PC suffering. I think it may have just crashed. But before we see just how much bloatware a reasonably priced modern gaming system can handle before it commits harakiri, it's time for a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Corsair and their MP600 Pro LPX NVMe drives with some crazy specs. Look at those read and write figures. Mmm. The Corsair MP600 Pro LPX drives are available in capacities up to 4 terabyte, and with its high endurance 3D TLC NAND flash and its low profile heatsink, it's a great option to upgrade the storage not only on your PC but also your PS5. So if you're addicted to hoarding games and you need some high quality storage in your life, check out the MP600 Pro LPX with the link in the description below. Thanks Corsair for sponsoring today's video. Now the system that I'm using for this video is the thousand-ish dollar micro center PC that I bought that has an i5-12400 in it, 16 gigs of RAM and dual channel, and an RX 6600, so just a solid gaming PC. Now for the baseline test, I am using the Windows install that came on the system. Aside from graphics card drivers, a couple of games, and like Firefox, there's not a whole lot on the system. The worst blowware that it has on it at the moment is just Windows 11. So in order to track the performance hemorrhaging, let's do a quick baseline test. Now running Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p high settings, you can see we're using around 10 gigs of RAM, which means we've got about six gigs of bloatware headroom. And that makes me think that maybe the CPU will tap out first, but we'll see what happens. Ah, oh, yes, that's a good number. And with that, let's get started. Just a quick disclaimer, I do play pretty fast and loose with the definition of bloatware in this video, so don't take any of it too seriously. Now we're gonna start off with just a whole bunch of different RGB control software. You know the software that you use in your gaming rig to sync up all of the lights to your favorite anime or whatever. Gonna start off with Armory Crate. Uh, I'm gonna install Armory Crate along with Aura Sync, just so that we we really maximize on that stuff. And this was just the beginning of a long and tedious process. I feel like it's taken really long. Installing every piece of RGB software I could think of. From IQ. Sure, whatever, I consent. To CAM. Just a little bit of CAM. And it really seemed like each piece of RGB software had its own unique annoying quirk to get it installed. Oh, okay, so you can't download RGB sync off of the RGB sync webpage. You have to go to a separate place to do that. Is is that the software that we're looking for? I don't even, I honestly don't even know why I'm asking. I don't care. We're just <laughs> we're gonna download it. Okay, apparently you have to download this one through the Microsoft Store, which kind of freaks me out a bit. So it has to install the install to install the thing. What is what, what is that even supposed to be? Okay. I love how not one of the pieces of software that we've installed so far has even mentioned the fact that there is no supported RGB hardware in the system for that software ecosystem. They're just like, yeah, fine. I'm super happy having you install me on here. Oh yes, I like that Razer seems to be leading the industry in terms of pieces of bloatware per install file. What is this? Five different pieces of bloatware in one install file. Some pioneering stuff right there. Now, at least this system does come with a one terabyte NVMe drive in it, which gives us plenty of space for bloatware. I'm just gonna leave all of this minimized in the background. Uh, it's only got two reviews. Both of them are one star. That's a great start. Thermaltex is also worried about the fact that we haven't bought any Thermaltake products. So we're just gonna do that. Okay, so I've finally gotten to the point where I've downloaded every bit of RGB software that I could think of. So with that, I'm gonna restart the system and then we'll do the benchmarks to see how much just a butt ton of RGB software affects gaming performance. As you can see, our taskbar's already gotten pretty full and there's a whole bunch more in here. So it's, it's going well so far. All in all, we're already sitting at 53% memory utilization, and we haven't even started gaming yet. Now, despite having 19 different pieces of RGB software running in the background, the system didn't seem to be behaving that differently. 
And in terms of the results, wow, okay, that didn't do as much as I thought it was gonna, but we did lose a bit of performance. So with that, let's move on to the next step. <sighs> Now the next step is to go onto Dell's website and just download a bunch of Alienware pre-installed software crap on the system and see what it does. Intel Management Engine Components, okay, let's download that. Here we've got Alienware Command Center, we're gonna download that. Fusion Service, I don't know what that is, but we're gonna download it. Uh, Alienware OC Control Application. Uh, Dell Support Assist OS Recovery Plugin. Okay, that sounds terrifying. Let's download that. Dell Update Application for Windows 10. We have Windows 11, but that doesn't matter. Uh, Dell Digital Delivery Application. I don't know what that is, but we'll download that anyway. And uh, yes, that seems to be all of it. So let's start installing it and see what happens. Apparently it was successful. I don't know what any of this stuff does. All of that stuff just installed and then vanished. So now that we've successfully installed all of the Dell crap that's just vanished into the ether, let's see what that's done to the gaming performance. Now in terms of gaming performance, one of the pieces of software I downloaded broke the AMD screen capture for some reason, but aside from that, the benchmark seems to still be running about the same. Oh, okay, that didn't really do anything, so let's add some more stuff. <sighs> Now the final group before we get to the antivirus bit of it is just a bunch of browsers and random crap. Okay, so we've got Firefox, we're gonna download Chrome. We need Edge running. Brave, Brave just looks like Chrome. Download Opera GX, download some gaming web browser. Download Opera, so this way we have Opera GX and Opera. They can kind of fight it out if they want to. Gonna use Vivaldi browser. Download Epic now, wow, this site looks like a virus. I did say random crap as well, so we're not just adding browsers here. I will also be downloading things like Power DVD. CC Cleaner is also very common. At which point I went and downloaded all of the other PC cleaners that I could find. I think in total there was about seven or eight of them. Ah, oh, yeah, we're gonna clean the crap out of this system. And this is alongside the additional seven browsers, all of the Dell crap and the 19 bits of RGB software. So let's see what this does to the gaming performance. Nice, we're finally seeing a pretty big jump in RAM utilization here and the CPU is getting close to 100%. But did that change the frame rate much? Ah, uh, this is getting really irritating. The system just isn't phased by any of this, which I think means it's time to finally bring out the big guns. And we're gonna start out with arguably the worst one. I wonder how many people actually voluntarily download McAfee. I can't imagine it's that many people. They must be confused as to why there's actual web traffic on their site at this point. But soon after my smuck alley comment, I made a terrible realization. It's still gonna want me to give my credit card information, isn't it? You can get a free trial, but you still need to give them all of your credit card information. So it means that I'm gonna have to remember to go back and cancel all of this stuff. Anna, if you're watching, uh, I may need your help to deal with the aftermath of this, uh, but I, I guess, let me go get my credit card. McAfee isn't even done installing yet, and it's already asking me to pay for the full one. Oh, there's a, a McAfee pop-up interrupted another McAfee pop-up. And this was just the beginning of a three hour ordeal downloading every antivirus I could find. Adding one after the other, my system grew heavy and my credit card increasingly laden. Only a couple of the antivirus refused to install because of all of the other antiviruses already on the system, but most of them didn't seem to mind. By the end of this ordeal, I collected an impressive total of 12 pieces of antivirus software each competing for space on the system, and many of which required credit card information, which I really need to remember to deal with. But finally, it was done. We now have a grand total of 12 antiviruses on here, 19 different pieces of RGB software, a whole bunch of Dell crap, 
We've got power DVD on here and like seven PC cleaners at least. I've lost track of a bunch of them. And we also have seven browsers on here as well as uTorrent just thrown in there for good measure. And with all of that on here, the system is idling with 100% CPU utilization and 81% memory utilization. A bunch of stuff has already crashed in the background like malware bytes and Firefox. They're just dead in the water at this point. <laughs> just look at all them icons. So let's see what all of that has done to the gaming performance. And then the waiting started. After half an hour of loading, I, I think it may have just crashed. After pressing Control alt delete it took a couple minutes for Task Manager to show up, but when it eventually did... Oh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is apparently still responding. I mean, I, I guess I just leave it for longer? But it seems like it was just the world's slowest crash, because over the next 15 minutes, the screen went blank, and eventually, the system unresponsive. However, all was not lost, because once the system restarted, which did take a while, and by a while, I mean several lifetimes. But eventually, bloatware stopped launching, and our idle usage figures returned to the very impressive figures we saw before. Not only that, the system actually managed to launch Shadow of the Tomb Raider and load a benchmark run. And in terms of the results, it actually wasn't that much worse than the previous run, which I find really impressive. Which I think means now I have to go and figure out how to save my credit card.